So we're looking at a Bobcat main control valve out of a skid steer. This is a D2 style valve that comes out of the M series skid steers, kind of your later, later model skid steers, the M series. Uh, the reason we got this valve out, because we, we, we got a um, an email from one of our viewers, and let's kind of decipher what he's saying here. It says, um, having trouble with the Bobcat T590, the machine is well maintained. I'm having trouble diagnosing an issue with the tractor when the machine is turned on and you press the green button, the push to operate button, uh, it feels like the tracks are locked up, like the parking brake is still on, and the hydraulic controls won't work. But if you jerk the steering handles back and forth, side to side, uh, you can kind of feel the tracks unlock and then he starts to gain function to the, um, the lift and tilt hydraulics. But if he raises the seat bar, or it, it only happens when it initially starts the machine and then when he raises the tilt bar and puts the tilt bar back down and tries to operate again, uh, he goes through the same process. It has a hard time getting the brakes unlocked and getting the functions to work. So what that tells me is that the machine is not getting the hydraulic charge pressure. And this is the first thing that comes to my mind, is not getting the hydraulic charge pressure to the, um, the big circuit and the brake circuit. And this tube right here is where the charge pressure enters that. Um, Bix is your Bobcat interlock control system. Right here, we would. this is the stem. We would have an electric coil right here. And when we press our green button, that energizes and opens this stem and lets hydraulic oil open up the Bix valves. And that allows oil to flow to our hydraulics where we can work our hydraulic controls. And also, when charge oil comes up here, comes out this port, and it goes down to our brake circuit. And there's another electric valve down on the brakes that allows that charge oil. Now, charge pressure on this machine is probably over 400 psi. Um, he's got a 590, so I don't know. Four, let's just say 430 psi. Um, that, that's flowing down to the brake coil, and then if it has two speed, it goes down to the brake and two speed block, right? And so. Um, with his issue with, with the brakes not unlocking and no hydraulic controls, that tells me there's a flow problem, more than likely, of charge oil reaching this circuit. And it's coming from this point. Well, at some point, Bobcat needed a check valve in line here. And I'm going to remove this tube here. So we can get a better look at this fitting right here. This would look like just a normal JIC fitting. But actually, behind this fitting, we're going to find a spring and a poppet that acts as a check valve. Okay. Now that I've got that out, there's our spring. Let's see if I can get the poppet out. Right here, see a little pointy looking poppet. The pointy side goes, the pointy side goes down into uh, this valve end right here. And what that does, you know, the spring pushes on that down into that port. And that, that helps maintain charge pressure on this side of the block. So this side is pressurized. If um, if your machine, if you're using a bunch of functions and charge pressure was to drop, this will close and keep this side pressurized so that keeps our Bix open so we can still operate the machine. Um, and what happens in the end of this fitting, there's a screen and that screen acts as a retainer for this spring. And what happens, I don't know if just over time that, that rush of charge pressure, um, the screen is kind of fine. So maybe debris is getting in behind that screen and, and the charge pressure is blowing that screen out. That allows our spring to shoot through this side of the fitting. And usually the spring and, and screen will get caught somewhere in this tube, hopefully. And then our poppet just kind of floats around inside of our fitting here. And now our charge pressure is pushing this poppet up into the end of the fitting here and blocking oil flow from passing through this tube to our Bix and our brake circuit. 
So what we'll do is we'll pull that out. You know, if the screen is more than likely your screen's missing, we just make sure there's nothing in there, remove everything and put the fitting back in. And now there's just a free flow of oil through that fitting. Well, wouldn't that be a problem? Well, no, because what Bobcat says is that the reason they put this uh, pop it in there, this check valve to maintain that pressure, is because on the older machines, the, the pumps weren't as efficient, I guess. That, nah, not necessarily efficient. Maybe the pumps just didn't have enough flow. I'm not sure what they mean by older machines. Um, but apparently what was happening is maybe the fan circuit would go full um, uh, full on and your working functions and we would lose enough charge pressure to hold that Bix open and your machine would lock up. That, that's what I'm assuming they're talking about. So that's why they put their poppet in there. But now the new machines have such good pumps, such high flow, or maybe the circuit's designed better where they don't need this fitting. So that's what Bobcat recommends is actually just taking this out and replacing it with a regular fitting. But of course, if we just clean all that out, it is a regular fitting, you know, we don't have anything to worry about. So just take those guts out and now we'll never have another problem with a uh, charge flow into our big circuit or brake coil or two speed. Uh, everything will work like normal. So who knows, at some point you may or may not run across that issue, but if you ever do or know someone who has, now you kind of know what to tell them. It's it's just when you start the machine, you press your green press to operate button and you just, it takes a little while. It, it doesn't, um, you know, your tracks don't release, you don't have hydraulics right away, but usually after a few seconds, after oil squeezes past the poppet, it'll eventually build enough pressure in here to get you uh, up and operating. So yeah, any questions on that? Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know. Thanks for watching. And uh, again, thank you so much for the, uh, the comment and, and maybe we can help someone else down the road.